Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below to offset those dislikes. If you aren't subscribed, remember to subscribe down below and click the little bell next to it. Ring my bell, baby. So, over to the current events. I've had a number of people aware of me that Scott Herman over at Scott Herman Fitness, I guess he's calling it muscular strength now. I don't know why. I mean, Scott, I actually kind of like you other than a few things. But you're not a strong dude. We need to work on that strength where you call it muscular strength. But that's okay. You're still growing and learning. But he made a video to where, like many of his others, it's hit or miss. Scott actually does have some good information. Uh, Scott sometimes on exercise selection, sometimes on training programming. He doesn't have a full grasp of it. But he is learning. He is coming along pretty well over the years. Uh, but he does get a lot of stuff right, too. And so, I mean, we got to give credit where credit is due. Now, this particular video, it started out really good. He was talking about guys who seem to have an imbalance or small chest. They got one teddy bigger than the other, right? Uh, he started out with a couple of good points, and then he kind of really messed up on the programming side. Only on the programming end. And I think it has to do with him maybe not looking at all of the data that's out there with the best athletes and coaches. Maybe not looking at the various volume studies on hypertrophy. Um, and he was attempting to create some programming to help with weak point training. Now, we need to address that though, because really he, he exceeded what's gonna be 99% of people who are drug free, their, their maximum recoverable volume. So it's, this is a problem. But he brought up up front, he was absolutely dead on. So I wanna give credit where credit is due. At the start of this video, I'm gonna give credit for the fact that he got the start of the video 100% accurate. And I can't disagree with any of the points he made in the first couple of minutes, okay? He said that the majority of guys out there who think they have a chesticles imbalance actually don't. It's in their head. It's a delusion. It's a body image issue that's not based on reality. Uh, the overwhelming majority of people who think that they have some left or right imbalance, they're body obsessed because they're focusing on it. Then they, they pose weird. They get wrong lighting because they, they notice little things that nobody else in the world notices. In other words, they take their shirt off at the beach. None of the girl stops and looks at them and goes, your left titty's bigger than the other. Right? It doesn't happen. It's in their head. And ironically, if you just get your training loading correct, unless you have some injury or deformity that's causing it, it's going to be a non-issue. People say, what about your left bicep? That's again, I had a piece of tissue cut out by a doctor. Therefore, because I physically had a chunk of muscle the size of my thumb that I saw sitting on the table after I saw it, Right? There's going to be an imbalance because it was physically cut out by a medical doctor. Okay, Or you have a traumatic injury or deformity. Okay, that's fine. But just from training, if you're training even remotely balanced, probably not. And that includes even with barbell lifts. Very, very small. And those things are relatively easy to correct with corrective exercises. Uh, and if it's big muscle groups. So point we come over to it's in people's heads it's not actually real now he did point out a lot of guys out there think they need a bigger chest their chest isn't big enough All right, they're trying to fill out that d cup bikini or whatever they're trying to do i don't know guys i don't judge uh so he brought over the point of look i've got a specialized routine now he did talk about look stretching and all this prehab he went through a lot of prehab stuff and mobility stuff and i'm laughing at it because i'm like man you guys would have to really suck to need that stuff but he pointed out when someone is at a certain level, they don't need to do anything, but he called the, uh, I guess the shoulder breakers is what he called them. Cause I actually do those as a bench warm up. I do five reps, right? He's like, I do a couple sets and you might only need to just do a few. Yep, I do five. Every bench session with my bands, I do five reps. With that, that movement he showed and that's it. That's my bench warm up. Sometimes I drop a foam roller on the bench and I practice arching and rolling across it just to loosen up all my lower back and my thoracic erectors, right? And I go straight to benching. Start ramping up. I mean, I start with an empty bar. I don't do a bunch of sets of 10. I do five, six reps, maybe 10 with an empty bar, and I go straight into doubles, right? We do doubles after that, all the way up. Sometimes all the way to a max. And that's, that's my bench warm-ups. Um, so he, he's showing people, look, they need to learn how to retract their scapula and everything else. Well, the point I will make with some of that is that's why we row, okay? Why do we have all novice lifters barbell row? So they learn how to retract their scapula. Correctly performed barbell row will teach you to retract down and back, right? 
down and back. Just doing a standing row, that's what's going to happen. You're going to end up going down and back with a pen lay row. Uh, your actual training teaches you to do that because you have to learn to do it under load. You can't just learn to do it just depressing in the air. It's not going to carry over when you get a heavy barbell in your hands. You have to learn to do it under load. Barbell rows are your solution for that. Easy solution. Program them. Write them. Put them in your program. Every novice program should have pen lay rows. Problem solved. So, over to the point. He was right. If you're not retracting your scapula when you bench, right? Boom. That's probably why you have a tiny chest. That's the number one reason. And what he talked about was, well, we've got to learn the mind-muscle connection. I'm going to disagree with that. Uh, we know based upon the studies that have looked at it, external cueing matters more than internal cueing. Guys who are not recruiting their pecs enough on the bench press, there's two solutions. They can either do mind-muscle connection or they can lift the weight faster. Say what? The data shows that you get better muscle engagement and activation in every muscle involved when you use with good form maximum acceleration, right? It actually exceeds what you get from the mind-muscle connection, but it does it for everything. So your triceps and your chest will actually get more work than if you actually focus on squeezing and contracting them and working them. What you need to worry about is scapular retraction and getting a good pause, a good touch on the bench and not being up here flared out. You've got to be tucked in. So, that's your thing to it. Uh, and I've done whole videos on how to do that. So that's your real solution. But then we come over to the problem with the programming. At first he's saying, oh, a lot of you guys are doing a bro split, a body part split, like a typical bodybuilder. Well, there's your first solution. Scott, there's your first fix. Tell them not to do that silly stuff. There's your first solution. Guys who are not using copious amounts of illicit substances, and I mean copious amounts, I'm not talking $100 a month, have no business training that way. I mean, you can if you want, but you're going to get a lot slower progress. That sort of training system was intended for guys who are using heavy amounts. They're using heavy amounts of stuff. That, that's not ideal. That's not what we want. Hopefully for the majority of you out there at any point in your life. So, over to the point with that. I thought he was going to go into some current periodization. He's like, well, I'm going to have you do two Two workouts. He's like, I want you to start off with 10 sets of bench press. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, there you go. There's your solution. They do 10 sets of bench press and go home, and they're going to go bench again the second day that week. If they have good scapular retraction and they're explosive, that will fix the problem if progressive overload is there. We're done. I'm thinking that's going to be the whole video, right? No. He has them do 10 sets, but instead of doing sets across or working with one training modality on day one and a different training modality on day, day two, what does he do? He starts with sets of 10s and goes all the way down to 3s. Now, 10 sets of bench. I don't recommend that. That's not ideal from a loading perspective. You need to have, if you're going to run two days, you're going to run heavier and lighter sets. You need to separate them on two different sessions. That's your ideal programming perspective. That's ideal. Has them do that, and I'm like, well, he better be done. But then he's like, then we're going to do, because he had that was a shallow incline. Then they did some sets of flat bench with short breaks. No, absolutely not. All the volume studies show that when quality sets are done, when you start exceeding, for, for chest specifically this has been looked at, even in the volume studies, when you exceed 10 sets in one training session, you gain less muscle from it. 15 sets produce less muscle growth than 10. 20 produce less than 15. So the more sets you added past the 10th set, the less muscle you gained. You've got to stop. I mean, that's fine. If you say, okay, I want you to do 10 sets of bench press, like 10 sets of five, right? That might be what I would recommend. You got a lagging chest, come in and do 10 sets of five on the bench press. Okay, all right, that's fine. Go home, you're done. Or do some other movements, do, do your rows, do your triceps. All right, you wanna do five or six sets of rows? Hey, you can work on that scapular retraction. You wanna do three or four sets of uh, skull crushers afterwards? Hey, no problem, knock it out. You're done with your chest. You're not doing more than 10 sets. You will grow less as a result of it unless you are up in the dose of the stuff you're putting in your body. So that's already a problem. He should not have had them go to a second and a third exercise. You just don't do more than 10 sets in a session unless it is very carefully programmed by a coach who's monitoring you very, very closely. Absolutely not as a cookie cutter prescription for people who don't know what they're doing because they don't know. They wouldn't have weak points if they knew what they were doing. So, that's an issue, already off the, right up front. Now, if we wanted to push people to their maximum volume because they have a lagging muscle, their chest, 
by all means, if you want to use bench press, do 10 sets of bench press in a session and come back and do 10 sets of another big movement the next session, right? 10 sets and 10 sets. I mean, we're talking about 20 total sets a week uh, done with the three to four days apart so that we have proper uh, muscle protein synthesis up time, proper recovery. That is a viable method. That's a viable method for a weak body part and it will work because you start, you're talking about 20 work sets a week, all right? That's a lot. They're quality sets. That's all you're going to handle. That's all you can handle and still properly recover and, and grow adequately. And then day two, you could come in and do another exercise. You could come in, depending upon how your chest is built, you could do a shallow incline. You could do a floor press. You could do weighted dips, depending upon how you're built. All right, you could come in and do 10 sets of one of those on the second day. Then do some triceps and other stuff. But that would be 10 total quality work sets with proper scapular retraction, full range of motion, twice a week. That's all you're going to handle. That will fix a chest weakness, though. That'll fix a chest weakness, particularly with those exercises done correctly. But he did the same thing. He's like, oh, I want you to come and do all these dumbbells, and then I want you to do these flights. It's like 10 sets of the, the first movement. Uh, we're basically, he's up to like 16 sets for your chest twice a week. As a drug-free lifter, particularly a novice one, he probably doesn't have any work capacity. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It is not going to work. Uh, the programming was terrible. Even though some of the earlier advice was dead on, uh, some of the discussion about, again, full range of motion, discussing about scapular retraction, about not flaring the elbows, there was some good stuff in there. But the programming itself was horrifically bad, and it will not fix the problem. It won't fix the problem. He basically just is throwing junk volume Throwing junk volume at, at a weak link, and this is not going to work. It's not going to work for anybody's any sort of long-term program. I'm not saying a person couldn't utilize this sort of approach for a three-week block. A three-week block is an overreaching block in terms of, of volume, and then they back way off. But anything beyond three weeks, it's actually going to cause regression. It's going to cause regression, not, not progression. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.